from the slopes of Mount Everest to the depths of the Mariana Trench. Living things are found on just about every inch of this planet. We take it for granted that our beloved pets, the flowers in our gardens, and even our favorite food are all examples of living things. Or were. But what exactly makes something living? In today's lesson, we start our biology series with a look at the characteristics of living things. I am Calvin Brown and welcome to the Jamaican Science Teacher. I wanna learn science but I don't know where to go I just click to YouTube and this is what the results show me the Jamaican science teacher 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 Yeah Before I get into today's lesson, I want to thank you for joining me on this journey of learning. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to this channel. To look at the characteristics of living things, we have to look at Mrs. Grain. <laughs> no, not that Mrs. Grain. Yeah, this Mrs. Grain. In order to memorize the seven characteristics of living things, we use the acronym Mrs. Grain. We start with a look at movement. Movement is an act of changing the position of the body or a part of the body. Most animals can move their whole bodies from place to place. We call that locomotion. Plants and some animals are only able to move parts of their bodies. <laughs> no, a flat not really it. <laughs> Plants move in response to things like sunlight, water and gravity. In humans and other animals, we use muscles in order to move our bodies. In addition to displaying movement, living things undergo the process of respiration. Respiration, which should not be confused with breathing or gaseous exchange, is the process by which energy is released from food. There are two types of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic means it requires oxygen. Anaerobic means it happens without oxygen. Generally, most of our cells undergo aerobic respiration. However, in order to undergo strenuous tasks like running the 100 meters in 9.58 seconds, our cells undergo anaerobic respiration. Of course, we will look at that in a subsequent video. Sensitivity, or irritability if you must, is the ability of a cell to receive and respond to a stimulus. Living things must be able to respond to changes in their environment in order to survive. Let's face it, the only thing constant is change, so you have to be able to respond to those changes or you just have a dead old brain. Growth. Growth is the permanent increase in the size and the complexity of an organism. <laughs> Many times I would have heard my mother say, I'm a born big. And it's true. Organisms increase in size and complexity. The next characteristic we look at is reproduction. Reproduction is defined as the process by which organisms give rise to new individuals. There are two types of reproduction. We have asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual means it requires only one parent. <laughs> yes, it would be cool if we could do that as humans and just divide into two, but that's not the case at all. Asexual reproduction occurs in bacteria and 
even some plants and even some animals also. However, sexual reproduction is what results in the variation we have as organisms. No two of us are the same unless we are twins. And while neither is better than the other, they do have their pros and their cons. Another thing that living things have in common is excretion. Excretion is the process, act, or function of discharging or ejecting waste products of metabolism. We oftentimes incorrectly classify ejection or defecation as excretion. However, ejection is removal of undigested food and is therefore not an example of excretion. I don't know about you, but me, me love food. Which takes us to the next characteristic of living things, nutrition. Nutrition is the process by which living organisms obtain or make food. Animals take in food and are called heterotrophs. 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 Right? That sounds so American. Heterotrophs. <laughs> the prefix hetero meaning other are different. And troph having to do with feeding. So animals require food from external sources. Plants, on the other hand, make their own food via photosynthesis and are called autotrophs. The prefix auto meaning self. Whether a bacterium, whether a plant, whether a dog, whether... Yeah, <laughs> those will all exhibit these seven characteristics that living things exhibit. We now take a look at viruses. Interesting fact, COVID-19 is the name of the disease, coronavirus disease. However, the name of the virus which results in COVID-19 is the SARS-CoV-2. Interesting fact, when we take a close look at viruses, we realize that Viruses do not display these seven characteristics of living things. And it's interesting, though man knows so much, our knowledge of viruses is limited. Viruses only display characteristics of living things when they are inside a host. On their own, viruses cannot reproduce. Viruses cannot move on their own. They need a host to transport them. Viruses do not display the seven characteristics of living things. In today's lesson, we looked at the seven characteristics of living things. You can always feel free to go back and go over the information if you missed something. Remember, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And thank you for making it the Jamaican science teacher. I wanna learn science, but I don't know where to go. I just click to YouTube and this is what the results show me. The Jamaican science teacher. 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 Did you make a science teacher? Yeah.